Let's say you find a mummy in your backyard, and you want to know how old it is. Heck, maybe you're famous. Well, you can do that using a technique known as carbon dating. And the deal is this. In the atmosphere, obviously there's a lot of carbon. And carbon gets the symbol C, and 12 is the stable form. Well, there's also some carbon-14, and that's an isotope. It's not stable. It decays. Well, as long as you're alive, the ratio of uh, C14 to C12 stays constant. Because although the C14 is decaying away, you're constantly breathing in new carbon, replenishing the supply, uh, so it stays constant, this ratio. But when you're dead, this, the, uh, you have a fixed amount of carbon when you're dead. So the C14 starts decaying away. And this ratio of C14 to C12 is not constant. Let's take a specific example. Let's assume that your mummy that you dug up in your backyard currently, so here I'll put mummy, it currently has a C14 mass of 1.2 grams. So the amount of carbon-14 is 1.2 grams. And then you look at the C12. So the amount of C12, that is stable carbon, stays the same. So by looking at how much C12 there is, you can say, hey, this should have 3 grams of C14. So for example, in this example, it should have 3 grams of C14, but it only has 1.2 grams, so it must be old must have been decaying away. So should have, for our example, three grams of C14. Excellent. So now we're ready to get to work. And we can simply use the half-life function. The half-life function tells us that the current mass equals the starting amount of mass multiplied by the half-life, t over the half-life time. So, I mean, looking at this formula, you can see that when the time is equal to the half-life time, you just multiply the initial amount by a half. So it totally makes sense. Let's plug in our numbers. Well, we currently have 1.2 grams of C14 mass. We know from the amount of C12 that there originally was 3 grams of C14, and then that's all multiplied by the half-life formula. Well, we also know that the half-life time for C14 is 57.30 years. So now we can... Uh, well, first let's let's do a little arithmetic, and then we'll plug in that half-life number. Let's divide both sides by three grams, and when we do that, 1.2 divided by three is 0 0.4, so that equals one half to the power of t over the half-life time. Excellent. Now, how do we get rid of an exponent? Well, we take the log of both sides. So we take the log of 0 0.4, and we take the log of all this business here. Well, that gives us log of 0 0.4 is negative 0 0.91629. And with the log here, I can bring the exponent down. So I have t divided by the half-life time log of one half, 
and I know what log of one half is. That just equals 0.69315, ooh, with a negative. So if I divide both sides by this number, I get a negative 0.91629 divided by a negative 0.69315, all equal to t over the half lifetime, which we have right here, is 5730 years. Finally, doing the last bit of arithmetic, multiplying both sides by 5730 years, Oops, let's get this right, 57, 30 years. And if I multiply all of this out, well, first of all, you see this guy cancels there, so I've isolated for T, and the time that you get is 8,270 years, so 8,270 years. So the mummy you dug up in your backyard is 8,270 8, years, are you famous? Uh, maybe, maybe not.